Hello and welcome to your in-depth forecast for week commencing the 17th of January for the Sun or the Ascendant. As ever, I'm going to give you a broad overview of what to expect this week before diving deep and sharing in forensic detail for each of the 12 zodiac signs what is in store. So this week begins with a very potent full moon in the sign of Cancer. The sign of Cancer is governed by the moon. So the moon being here is, if you like, in its home birth. But this opposition with uh, the sign of Capricorn is very marked because in Capricorn, Pluto, the planet of change, is very closely tethered to the sun and therefore the moon's in an opposition to uh, Pluto as well as the sun. When the Moon and Pluto are in the mix in an opposition, that can create a polarisation and it can be quite difficult to find a balance. Now the Moon's asking us to stay mindful as we punch our way towards our goals, ambitions and targets, very Capricorn energy and very much the physical world. The Cancerian energy is reminding us that we must stay in touch with how it feels and if something feels not so comfortable, even if it's given us some form of success or progress, just to try to reconfigure things so things are a little bit better aligned. And this energy will last for the next two weeks. If you'd like to know more about the full moon, you can join me for my deep dive video by seeing the link beneath this uh, show. But all this week, Mars is actually forging a very positive link to Pluto, so we have a semi-sextile, and that's very energising. Mars continues in the sign of Sagittarius, but there's three of the more draining, enervating vibe of Neptune, which really was affecting it quite badly for the previous 10 days. So I think energy can generally be a lot better. Also Uranus has gone direct. Uranus has been in a very jagged, abrasive right angle with Saturn, and the great news is as the Sun moves on Thursday into the sign of uh, Aquarius, the right angle between the two rulers of Aquarius, traditional Saturn, modern Uranus, actually stretches out to four degrees. Now when I do the Sun sign forecast, I always take into account uh, influences within three degree orb. So that's a very precise influence. So they're starting to stretch apart now and they really have caused immense impact over the last year and given us quite a few sleepless nights, made us more agitated, perhaps seen us quite frustrated by the restrictions that may have been imposed upon us. But now things will ease a little bit. But the sun moving into the sign of Aquarius joins up with Saturn, but also with the retreat in Mercury, still in that retrograde. So uh, the Sun moving into this area can mitigate some of the snags that Mercury in Aquarius in retrograde can create. So if there has been some tensions around friendships, or perhaps we just haven't heard from someone, perhaps we've been preoccupied with those more worldly aims and ambitions, then what the sun's saying is that it's very important to stay joined together with others. Now as the week draws to a close, it's the sun's turn to be in a semi-sextile, but this time with Jupiter. Jupiter, of course, has only recently left the sign of Aquarius the last three days of last year, so it moved back into its home zone of Pisces, but it's actually beautifully aligned to the sun as this week draws to a close. So, there may be some good news that we're not expecting. Perhaps someone we haven't heard from for, for some while is going to be in contact. Or a good deed can come in our direction. Or perhaps it's going to be us who does something more altruistic for another person. This is also a week when Venus, the planet of love, but also of loot, forges a very promising link with Uranus. If this rings a bell, it's because Venus is retreated in its retrograde to the point of reactivating its 120 degree enabling trine with the rather erratic energies of Uranus. But this is just saying to us, look, if we can think outside the box when it comes to our resources and perhaps also our relationships to try to enliven them with some freshness, then that's a smart thing to do. Now, if you're new to my channel, I would be honoured if you would subscribe. Please click or tap 
on the bell notification symbol. You can also get your free daily written horoscope fired to your device each morning by seeing the link beneath this video. Or if you'd like to order your 12 month forecast and get your character analysis based on your personal astrology, you can do so and get 30% off by seeing the link below. But please stay with me for your in-depth zodiac sign forecast. Hello Scorpio and welcome to your in-depth forecast for week commencing the 17th of January. Now the big focus rightly this week will be the fact that Uranus goes forwards. Now I know there is also a full moon and this occurs in your sister water sign of Cancer on Monday in London, New York and LA and on Tuesday in Sydney and Delhi. But you know, the other really big event this week for your sign is the fact that your two rulers, your traditional ruler of Mars, your modern higher octave ruler of Pluto, are in a semi-sextile for the whole of the week. So if you're wanting to do better around your financial situation, this combination can give you tremendous drive and verve and enthusiasm to express your ideas with real passion. But of course the full moon does go across the third and ninth house axis. The ninth house where the moon is, is very much about your desire to widen your horizons. Now sadly for many people travel is somewhat limited, but if that doesn't apply for you, this full moon could give you the urge to break out and do something more varied and spontaneous. If that is getting on a plane for you, that may work for you. For another Scorpio, it could be engaging in some kind of higher educational course. Anything which stimulates your higher ideals is really going to be very good on the back of this full moon. But because Pluto, your ruler, is very, very close to the sun, it is possible that your viewpoints, your belief systems, can go through over the next two weeks somewhat of a sea change. That doesn't mean to say that you're going to give up everything that's made you who you are now, but there could be some refreshing, some changing of the guard. Now, of course, Mercury is in retrograde in your set of, of home and emotions. That may have made you feel a little bit more inward. Uh, and it's also true that the sun moves into this area later this week. So feeling at ease and comfortable in your environments is definitely going to be a big story over the next four weeks. But... That Mercury retrograde, <clears throat> pardon me, for some Scorpio people, could be rethinking where you live or if you work from home, repurposing your accommodation to create the space that works for you. Now, of course, the two rulers of Aquarius, Saturn, traditional, Uranus, modern, they're in a quarrel. That does come not to an end at the end of this week, but they're pulling apart. It's not quite as corrosive. But Saturn is in the fourth house of your emotion and Uranus in your seventh house of where you, how you connect to others. So Uranus can be a very instant energy. With it going forwards on Tuesday, I think that's generally very helpful. But there may still be something that is jagging your nervous system or making you feel a bit defensive. And the key to this week, with all the electric energy going around communication, is to try to engage with it, not react to it. Thank you.